Off to Charlotte tomorrow. Very excited about being involved once again in the NCAA tournament, and our goal is to go and win two games. And in order to win two games, you have to win the first one. So we have jumped in both feet on St. John's. Very athletic, senior-driven, scoring, scoring in lots of different ways. Make a, they make hard shots. They are a hard team to guard. And that will be our challenge, to be able to make sure they don't get a lot of easy baskets, especially out of transition. And they, they look to score every time out of transition that they possibly can. So we, uh, we've got uh, a good team that we're playing, and they're playing a good team. So I would anticipate a really, really exciting basketball game, and we are going to need to score more than 43 points if we want to be successful, and I do believe that we will. Hopefully we'll get that in a half. <laughs> Anything for me. Do you get tired of hearing that? These, these analysts, I've heard them on a couple of occasions. Every time they talk Aztec basketball, they go, wait a minute, this team can't score. Can't win if you can't score. Does, does it get old? Does it, do you use that as motivation? What bothers me? <laughs> Candidly, I've been more involved in watching tape on, on St. John's. For the first time in a long time, I didn't turn the TV on uh, last night at all. Didn't watch one speck of TV. And, uh, you know, some analysts look at stats and say they can't score. Many who have seen us, I, I said to the staff, when I did watch a little bit on Sunday, uh, it seemed as if the people from CBS who had seen us a lot said, I, I like this team. And some that didn't see us play said, I like the other team. So we can't worry about what others say. We've got to just do our very best uh, to come out and play. And uh, I mean, we, we look at stats too. And we know that we're, we don't score a lot of points in some games. And we've got to be able to do that. In the, in the Wyoming game, I had us for 49 possessions, I think. Uh, Ken Pomeroy and his stats had the game for 47 possessions for us, which is unheard of in terms of the low number. So you're going to have a harder time scoring when the possessions are that low. And yet we had opportunities. We, you know, we missed a lot of layups and a lot of easy stuff. And we're going to need to make those. The guys seem more excited about going all the way to Charlotte versus going to, you know, one of the closer venues for, for the, you know, up in Seattle or up in Portland. Can you speak to, you know, them, a lot of people look at it as like a slight you're getting sent across the country, but they don't look at it like that. They look at it like, well, we get to play in an NBA arena. We're going to Charlotte, so we have to be excited about going to Charlotte. Uh, so you don't pick and choose where you go. If you wind up landing a top three or four seed spot, then they usually keep you closer at home, usually. Uh, but the nice thing about going to Charlotte, we're playing on San Diego time. We play at 6.40 San Diego time on Friday, which our body clock should be in pretty good shape for that. Coach, you have uh, nine players in your roster who've been to an NCAA tournament before. They have one, and it was Jamal Branch. He was at Texas A&M and didn't play in the game. Um, how much of an advantage is it to have been there and done that? I mean, you've had teams that have had both, or does it not matter? <laughs> Uh, you, can, you can talk to the advantage, and the advantage of having been there before is you know all the obligations you must deal with starting with Thursday when uh, you have a mandated head coaches meeting that's right smack in the middle of when you would like to probably have your own private practice. So you go around that, and uh, then we have our shoot around, mandatory, that we're there at a not so great time in the late, late afternoon when we would rather be off our feet already. So uh, they know that, they're used to that drill, so we'll, we'll get ourselves a high school gym or a place to go for, the, for our practice and come in and spot shoot and spend our 50 minutes mandated on the floor. And then the press conferences, you have to bring five guys and those kinds of things. I think if you're used to it, 
you don't you don't say man why what's going on and yet when we play on friday i don't know how much having had that experience before will impact being ready to play play hard play in the moment that sort of thing and that's what you have to do we've all seen very young teams who have never been come in and play lights out play really well uh so that I haven't even given a thought to. I'm glad we've been in. I'm glad we've got nine guys, which just means we've been in before. So we're going to need to just come out and play. And I like our team. The three, the three fifth-year seniors who were up here, uh, I think that's helpful when you have age and experience in a lot of situations. How are they different without their uh, center? They take their eraser away. He blocked more shots than Skyler. And I talked about what an impact Skyler had for us being able to allow you to really guard hard on the perimeter with no worry if you get beat on the bounce. Uh, now, if they get beat on the dribble, they're a little more vulnerable at the rim. They don't have that, that eraser who's there. So I think that's, that's, a, that's a factor. That is a factor. Can you play in a new venue or venue you've never played at? How difficult is it for the guys or easy is it for the guys to get used to the, the shooting on that on those particular rims? Shooting on what shooting, now? When you're, when you're playing at Time Warner Arena, like, which you guys have never played at before, I mean, is, is it different from place to place? You know, I think, you know, we've, we've had the experience of playing in the Honda Center. It's, it's something of that nature. And uh, you have to go out, and that, that's where you use your 50 minutes is to, to get acclimated to the surroundings and the depth and that sort of thing. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. Uh, you know, we've had some games in small gyms where we shot well. We've had some games in small gyms where we haven't shot well. So we're hoping that we'll shoot well. I think Malik has in increasingly gained confidence in himself doing a variety of things. Uh, I think he's a little better defensively moving his feet, staying in front of a guy, being more aware, uh, being more engaged. And yet, it, at times uh, in the conference tournament, he had the look of a freshman in, on occasion uh, in terms of not, you know, forgetting what to do a couple times. And uh, I think early in, in one of the games, he missed a shot and then got hesitant to shoot his shot. And I think that's a little bit of youthfulness still that's there. That being said, he led us in scoring in the Wyoming game, looked good doing it. And, uh, you know, my, my message to him was, be true to yourself, know who you are, know what you can do. You have to know time and circumstance. If we've just missed three straight threes, maybe you pass up the first open three, but you can't pass up, pass up the three because you missed one, if that's why you pass it up. Well, as a team that's been struggling to score um, consistently at least, this is a guy I feel like who's developed and come along with someone who's there who wasn't there early on. Could, could this guy be the difference in terms of guys putting points on the board that, that maybe would have struggled with? Malik could be a big factor, no question. Malik can score the ball. He gets it, and you think good things are going to happen offensively. And uh, we need to make sure that we get him enough minutes, enough touches, enough opportunities the right way to, uh, to get his shot. There's Dwayne, uh, obviously – Played at St. John's, but he, nobody on the team was there when he was there. Uh, only a couple of the coaches. Is, is that a factor at all? Do you think, uh, or, or he keeps saying it's just another game? Is it? Is it really just another game? Is, is it an overblown story? I, the only it'll be a factor a little bit. I think for Dwayne when he goes there, Steve Lavin recruited him. Gene Cady was with with Lavin. Uh, I remember when he transferred in. I talked to Cady about him, and he referred to him as Bambi. You know, he was a guy that was all arms and legs, he said, when he was there. And, uh, 
so I know they'll hug and uh, and embrace one another when they when they see him. Uh, but uh, from a standpoint of impacting anything, got to make sure that uh, Dwayne doesn't get caught up in it. I don't think he will. I don't think he will. So I, I don't think it'll have a great impact on it. How about the, the possibility of possibility of getting to face Duke? Is that a distraction? Is that something you worry about, or is it just focused on St. John's and don't worry about that? No, that's not a distraction. That would be something that we would look forward to if it presented itself. Uh, so we obviously have to have to win our first game, as do they. Uh, a one has never lost a 16. I believe a nine has beaten an eight on occasion, uh, but hopefully that won't happen uh, on on Friday. I popped in the uh, St. John's Duke tape this morning, and it was uh, Mike's thousandth victory, if you remember. And St. John's led them by 10 and midway through the second half, led them by six fairly late in the second half, and, uh, and Duke won. So uh, we're playing a good team. We're playing a team that scores a lot of points, and we've got to try to keep them below what their normal is and uh, see if we can get a chance to play in that game on Sunday. With that the, got it? With the USD job open and you guys having so, so much success, Justin has been mentioned as one of the guys to possibly go over there. Is that just one of those things of, of being a winning program that people want what you guys have a little bit, especially assistance? I think any time there's a job opening, especially in your own town from a, from a San Diego State perspective, we've been successful. So there's reasons why you're successful, and uh, we've not shied away from saying we've got a lot of great assistant coaches that all want to be head coaches. It's not a distraction. It's a, I think it's a compliment that if somebody would mention, hey, they got guys over there that somebody should take a look at. Uh, but we're all, all hands on deck right now for the tournament that we're in and, and any thing that, that comes as a result of that for opportunities, uh, that, that's also, I think that's good. That's a win-win for us. What are your thoughts on Bill Greer getting fired? I, I feel bad. I, I, I've gotten fired. It's no fun. People can say I know how it feels, but you really don't unless it's happened to you. And when it happens, it impacts not only a person, but it, impact, it impacts families, from Bill and Nicole and his family to all the assistant coaches who are involved in the program. Uh, so you have, uh, you have empathy. And Bill's a very good basketball coach and a terrific person who worked exceptionally hard. He was there eight years. Uh, we're all, we all know the drill. We know that winning is a, is a huge piece to staying anywhere. When, sometimes coaches get fired even when they win a lot. But if you don't win a lot, ultimately something's going to happen. Uh, but I feel bad for, I feel bad for, for Bill uh, because we're friends. I know him. But I also know the, the wave that occurs when it happens for a whole lot of people and the emotions that go in, not just for the guys, but for the, the women and kids who are also fully invested. So uh, you, you, you say, well, everybody will land on their feet. Usually that happens. Usually that happens, and, and hopefully it will for all of them.